Welcome back to the Jack Fleming Artistry Channel. I have a deadline to paint shark mouth nose art on seven sets of these in the next seven days. It's a total of 14 shark mouth faces. Um, let's get started. Okay, let's get these out of the box here. Got to tell you, whenever I wrap these back up afterwards to take them back to them, I did not wrap them as well as they did. They did an amazing job wrapping these things up. Well, now that I've got all these unwrapped, it's time to clean all of them and prep them. I think the best way to do this job is going to be kind of assembly line style. So I'll clean all of them first, then I will get my graphic transferred onto them and start painting. Okay. I'll be honest with you guys, I never really intended for this channel to be sort of a tutorial kind of channel, but more of like a show and tell. Here's what's going on in the studio, here's what we're working on. However, seems like it's a lot easier sometimes just to make videos where I explain what I'm doing and what I'm using really quick on these I'm just wiping them down they come pretty clean because nothing's really happened to them using glass cleaner and lint-free towels get a big giant box of them uh, from auto parts store and that's enough to get it all clean and ready for paint to stick on these. Again, fresh paint, it hasn't been out in anything. So let's go ahead and get the rest of them cleaned up. All right, get out a few tools I know I'm gonna need. Tape measure, ballpoint pen, stabilo, my hand-drawn template. This is my version of the shark mouth. Need some tape, and of course, serral paper, serral paper, however you pronounce it. Um, mine is already cut into little sheets, so I only need one of these. I'm gonna put the rest back so it doesn't get messed up, and get to work. All right, just so you know, on this first one, I eyeballed where it was that I wanted the design to be. After that, you know, went ahead, draw it off. For the rest of them, I end up measuring to make them in the same spot as this one is. I uh, doesn't show in the film here, but I put the measurements. I just write them on the glass on my table so that I've got them to refer to. Let's keep going. Stopped here real quick because we got a visitor in the studio. Ladybug. I don't know. Get funny things flying. Better him than a wasp. Back to work. All right. Got the first step down. Used my serial paper. Traced this on 14 of these. Um, next step, I think I'm going to come through and I'm going to paint all my white first on all of them. So, see how that goes. Alright, get some paint in my cup here using some Alpha Enamel, Alpha Red. Since I'm using their paint, I'm using their hardener. Try and make this stuff a little bit more scratch proof. Kind of mix it up really good. It really only takes a few drops of that hardener. And then we get to painting. And there's gonna be a lot of painting. So, fast forward cam, here it is.
You can probably tell in the video here, I am actually second coating these as I go. So I come through and do three or four teeth and then come back and do those three or four teeth again. Finish, come back again. All right, I was I think like four and a half hours on doing all the red on this. So let's see if I'm faster or slower doing the white. I know it's super sped up here, so it's hard to tell, but I started off with a larger lettering quill to fill in the big parts of the white. And then I come back with my pinstriping brush to kind of refine the edges on them and the bottoms and tops of them. Yeah. Kind of the process there. Also, don't worry too much about them being perfect except for on top of the red because I know that I'm going to come through and cover the edges of everything with black. Take a little break here and let you guys know kind of how this is going. Um, been watching the progress so far. You see that I've got the red and the white. And that's uh, the beginning of the video here. I mentioned that I was trying to do seven sets of these, 14 of them, in seven days. Today is day six. I want to try and finish them today and deliver them on day seven tomorrow if I can. So this last push here is going to be doing all the black. And this is time to get going with that. All right, here you can see that process a little better of filling in first with the larger brush and then coming back with the striping brush to clean up the details on it. Go ahead and outline the outsides of everything with it. This way it looks sharp, clean really is one of my favorite parts of doing this that black just cleans it all up and makes it all look finished it's like magic watch watch it Finishing up on day six did not work out. I uh, made it to about 1.30 in the morning and <laughs> realized that I had all my black done, I had everything done for the graphics, but I forgot to do the lettering. So here we are, day seven, lettering 14 of these. Hope to finish today so I can deliver tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna try and spare you guys from watching me do this to 14 of these, but I figured I'd take the time on one and show you how I'm gonna go about doing the lettering here, what my process will be. First, I'm marking off where the lettering is gonna go. Getting it straight, getting my width and everything together using tape. I put down this piece of green tape first, and then I'm gonna mark the bottom of the letters. We'll end at the top of this white piece of tape, cream colored. These are just guides. Take um, eyeball how high I want that. I kind of have in mind how tall I want these letters. And I'm just tearing the tape off there. Just put one finger down and pull. So, I remove the green. And now I have the tops and bottoms of my letters. And it's straight. Let's go to the next part. So I'm actually going to sit here and trace off the letters from one that's similar to these that I already did because we want the same letters, close to the same size. Um, and again, I'm doing 14 of these. So the game plan right now 
trace these off, rework them to be the same size as what I've marked on all 14 of these tanks. I went ahead and marked all of those. Um, when I'm done with this, I'm going to turn it into a pounce pattern. Reason for that, rather than using serial paper, I think the pounce pattern is going to be a whole lot faster. I take the time to make it, and I've only got to rub chalk powder over every one of these. I don't have to sit there and line up serial paper and a drawing on every one and try and tape them off in the right spot. Just put the pounce pattern down, line it up, and uh, pounce it. So let me fast forward this for you guys through the process. We don't have to sit here and watch this. And we'll get going. Okay, now that that is drawn off to the size that I want, I'm going to take my little drawing, kind of review it. I think it looks pretty good. We're going to get rid of that tracing. And I've got a piece of cardboard here that's just from some package that came. Nothing special. Put that on here. And I wanted to show y'all, this is a pounce wheel. I don't know, maybe you can see it better if I do it here. Try and bring it closer to you. So it's going to make little bitty holes wherever I roll it for the letters. And then I can make, uh, or I can take a powder and rub over it and it'll come through. So let me go ahead and pounce that out. And then I will show you guys how to transfer this image on 14 of it. Oh, I forgot to hit record there whenever I was pouncing this out. I've already rolled over all of this. Show you real fast. This just makes little holes. Okay, that allows powder to come through. This is what the back of my pattern looks like at the moment. I'm afraid these holes might not be opened up enough, so I'm going to sand over them with a little bit of sandpaper and then get to uh, putting these down on the tanks. Just going to use a piece of 320 here and go over it lightly. Don't want to open it up too much. I've had problems sometimes with ripping it if I do that. I like to go in a couple of different directions. Again, being light. Let's go up and down. I have sanded through my paper before. Try not to do that. And let me show you. In here I have what I use for a pounce bag. I'm kind of old school. My pounce bag is basically a sock with chalk in it. You can see I got blue chalk right now. Um, sometimes I just use baby powder. They make pounce powder. They make little boxes that have a little pounce pad in them. Um, I had a sock and I had chalk, so it didn't cost me any money to make that. So let's go ahead and start transferring one of these. We'll do this first one here as an example, and then I will do a hyperlapse to show you all the rest. I can fill my lines. You know what I'm actually gonna do? Let's do this. Let's cut a little bit off there so that we can clearly see that we're lined up. I'm gonna eyeball how far down the line I want it. Just to what I think looks good. I think that's too close to the end there. Let's go right there. Make sure we're on our lines. Put my tape down. Get my deal here. And all we got to do, and this one's been in the bag for a while, so it's kind of covered. We're just kind of tapping and rubbing. 
kind of at the same time, so it's pushing it through those holes. And I'll blow that off a little. So I don't have too much extra. And let's see if it worked. It did. I've got my letters down. And I can kind of blow that off, get some of the excess off. I don't want to rub that too much and make them go away, but now I can just paint straight over them and get it done. I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of these and then come back and paint. Okay, real quick before I start painting, I wanted to show you. You see up close, there's all my little dots. Okay, I'm using just my desk brush right here and I'm going to lightly kind of go over that. The reason that I'm doing that is it knocks some of that down. I can still see my pattern. Well, it's kind of hard to see in the video here, but it's knocked down those little mountains of powder. That way they don't interfere with my brush strokes. So after I've done that to all of these, we'll get started. I'm trying to save you guys a little bit of time here. And not show you me doing every one at this point. So. Let's go. For the coloring on these letters, I want to stick with an olive drab green, but one that's darker. I don't want to use black, and I don't really think I want to use white. So we're going to see if we can make one. I don't really have one. I'm going to start with dark green, which honestly on its own really isn't too bad on this, but I don't want it to be that bright. So start by putting a fair amount of that in my cup. That's going to be our base color there. And then if I want to dull that, which is what I want to do right now, I'm going to add the opposite color on the color wheel. Um, in this case, that's probably going to be somewhere between this vermilion and maroon. Let's start with the vermilion. Usually that makes things a little darker and a little duller at the same time. mix see what happens to that I kind of like the darkness of this so I don't know that I want it to become too much darker that's why I'm not jumping into that maroon not too bad so far but it's still a little brighter than I want it to be I have a few other colors laid up here just in case it gets too dark I've got some tan that'll make it warmer and lighter got my white if I need to make it darker, I have some black sitting over here. Let's see what that does. That is becoming more of an olive color. I don't know how well y'all can see, but I can look in my cup and I can see the difference. Man, I think I might even kind of really like that as is. Let's go just a little bit duller. Oops, got a little bit on my tank. I guess I shouldn't be mixing right here on it. Man, that is a dark olive drab. I think that might be actually because it's going to dry darker. It's a little darker than I want. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of a light color to lighten up a dark color. It doesn't take much of a dark color to darken a light color. So let's a bunch of that in there. Ooh, that's a cool color. I don't know if you can tell in my cup the difference there. I think that might be really close. Go a little lighter. Keeping in mind that it dries darker. Ooh, I think this is it. I think that's going to be it. That's our color. So, we used medium green, vermilion, and tan to make kind of a dark sort of olive drab green, army green. Okay, time to paint away. As you can see, that little bit of tape at the top and the bottom allows me to just kind of paint over the top of it for some crisp tops and bottoms to my lines, making things just a little bit faster. 
as a quick note, I paint my round letters, so in this case the letter C, after I've pulled that tape. That way I can make the rounded tops and bottoms come just a little bit above that margin line there. Actually makes them look the right size when they're just a little bit bigger. Alright, it is day 8. I finished on day 7, so 7 of them were painted in 7 days, but here we are on day 8. It's time to clean them, time to deliver them. Ah, if you look, I've got with the thumb written there for them. Brown on brown, green on green. Should look pretty cool. Get these cleaned up and delivered to them. There's your cool sneak peek of what my next video is gonna be. Uh, hope you guys have enjoyed, and if you wanna watch this next video, hit that subscribe button. Maybe ring the little bell thing. That way you know when it's coming. We're going to be testing out some alcohol markers that I haven't used before and getting this drawing that you may have seen before ready to make some new prints for the upcoming car show season. As always, have a good day. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. And we'll see you guys next time. Go make something. <laughs>